Today, we have much more information about Doug Hughes, the 61-year-old mailman who yesterday landed a gyrocopter on the lawn of the Capitol to protest the corruptive influence of money in politics, including what he's actually going to be charged with. But first, for more information about how he did it and why he did it, we turn to this video put together by AJ+. I'm not suicidal, and I'm not going to commit suicide, and I'm not going to fly into any monuments. The terrorists don't broadcast their flight path. Terrorists don't invite an escort. Uh, so immediately this raises one big question that a lot of people in the media and around the country have been trying to answer. Uh, what is a gyrocopter? Well, I'm actually what? really upset that the criminal act here wasn't naming an aircraft something else, right? Like, why would you name it a gyrocopter? It's not delivering gyros. Exactly. <laughs> right? So that, that's really what offended me about this story. Mm -hmm. um, but he purposely chose that aircraft because it's as transparent as you can be. He wanted to make sure the Secret Service knew that he yeah. wasn't some sort of terrorist. So he chose the right aircraft, I would argue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, he had considered apparently some sort of small fixed wing aircraft, but believed that that would be considered too threatening. I think that he was right there. Uh, but as I said, we do know what he's being charged with. So Douglas Hughes, 61, charged with violating aircraft registration requirements, a felony, and violating national defense airspace, a misdemeanor. If convicted, he could be sentenced to up to three years in prison for the felony and one year in prison for the airspace violation, which immediately strikes me as odd that the registration requirements more damaging than right. violating government <laughs> airspace. I'm a bit surprised by that. Yeah, I think Doug Hughes is a hero, and I think that his whole plan, you know, two and a half years, this was very meticulously planned out. He, They were all very well aware the Secret Service had visited his house. As he said, he, he got an escort. He wanted to fly this flying bicycle. So it could be <laughs> as transparent as possible and kind of, you know, uh, not harming anyone, mm -hmm. uh, really. And he did it for a very specific reason. And I love that he brought up uh, Jank and, and all of the, like, the wolf pack issues here because, I mean, this is a huge problem here. Mm -hmm. And we need to start risking safety and also things like this to really make a strong point and, yeah. and that's exactly what he did and I think it's badass. Yeah. yeah, it's a clear case of civil disobedience and in reality he put his own life in risk right. in order to raise awareness about an issue that really affects every single American. Yeah. So he is a real believer in the democratic process, he wants to protect it, he wants to get money out of politics. I'm so happy he didn't get shot down because he's not a threat to anyone, as Abby mentioned. Uh, but we do have some quotes from him about what he is actually hoping to accomplish with the stunt that he pulled off earlier this week. He says, I'm demanding reform and declaring a voter's rebellion in a manner consistent with Jefferson's description of rights in the Declaration of Independence. As a member of Congress, you have three options. You may pretend corruption does not exist, which is what they seem to be doing right now. <laughs> you may pretend to oppose corruption while you sabotage reform. They're also doing that. And you may, or you may actively participate in real reform. And he also says, I'm not promoting myself. I'm trying to direct millions of people to information, to a menu of organizations that are working together to fix Congress. Uh, one of those, of course, being Wolfpack at mm -hmm. wolfpack.com. So Richard Burns is a 27-year-old. He works at a marijuana lobby group in Washington. <laughs> and apparently this is what he said about Mr. Hughes. I don't know whatever it was he was doing, but I support him. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. It, it's also it's interesting to consider, like, he's doing this for campaign finance reform. He's mm -hmm. against Citizens United. He wants to see it, it reversed. Maybe he'll be voting for Hillary since she's apparently in favor of that constitutional amendment as well. We found out earlier this week. But I wonder if, I doubt he's going to get much positive coverage on, well, we're going to show you in a minute on MSNBC, they're calling for him to have been shot, uh, at least one host, and on Fox, I doubt, I mean, they're not going to be amenable to that, that position. But what if he'd been going there just to demonstrate, like he wanted to wield his long rifle on the grounds of the Capitol or to showcase that, you know, he should be allowed to, to bring his guns wherever he wants, that sort of issue. Like we saw how they treated uh, the, with Bundy. Yes. Right. They were, they were totally in favor of that. They thought that even aiming guns directly at federal officers is a totally fine expression. And can of you imagine if the people in Bundy Ranch were black? 
on horseback oh, with yeah. guns. Just like you, you were saying, if this guy was Muslim in a gyrocopter, what? Yeah, <laughs> and he looked even slightly Muslim. Like, no, he wearing a tiny bit brown. He would have been yeah. shot down. Uh, and to, to show how some in the, the, the Beltway think that that would have been a justified response, we go to Joe Scarborough. I, 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 is it just is it just me? I'm sorry. I'm sure it is just uh, me. No, I'm going to say I don't, it. I don't, here it comes. I don't, I don't, here here it comes. comes. Here's the wind up. And here's the, it's the same thing with the guy running into the White House. If you're running into the White House and you've got all these Secret Service guys with guns by their side, yeah. I don't care who he is. If you're breaking the fence and you're running to the White House and you're putting the safety well, of the first family, shoot him. Just shoot him. And hopefully they've trained you to shoot him in both legs. If a guy is going around the Capitol, yeah. one of the most most uh, sensitive, uh, sensitive zones there is, you better have a way to shoot something out of the sky. What? Mika, would you shoot him down or I, let him fly around? If I did not know who he was and yeah. I was running you security there. You don't know there, who he is. Uh, well, at the very would, least, you a get a warning it. and another warning. You get a and helicopter to ask for And then, yeah. Yeah. then he doesn't go down, then you take a shot at him. Two warnings. Is she not merciful? Is she not? But I think, like we now that we know about him, we know mm -hmm. that he was what he was trying to do. The fact that he prepared so long for it, that he understood that he could possibly die as a result of this, and we also know, looking more into the story, that he's sort of driven by what happened to his son, who died in a car accident. Um, if we didn't know all of that, and somebody was flying a small aircraft around the, the Capitol, I wonder if that was all the information we had, and they did shoot him down. If we would consider it justified at that point. I don't, I don't know if I would find it justified. Mm. I don't know if Joe Scarborough actually read the story or really understands mm -hmm. what happened. Right. So right before Hughes did this, he alerted media, he alerted the Secret Service, although they denied that they were alerted. Um, the, I believe it was the Tampa Bay Times. They uh, published the story immediately yeah. as he w took off yeah, for flight. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, An hour and a half before he landed. Exactly. So for him... I, I, he didn't put the first family in danger. Right. He didn't put anyone in danger. And that's the thing. I think that Joe Scarborough's response to this is indicative of how the U.S. thinks about everything, right? Shoot first, ask questions later. If, if anything if is... If necessary, ask if, questions. If, if eh, necessary, right. exactly. So if, if, if it's even a small perceived threat, go after it, shoot it, kill it, get rid of it, and then maybe we'll investigate it a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's a really big problem because here you have... In my opinion, a harmless guy mm -hmm. who's just trying to show an act of civil disobedience, raise awareness about a very serious political issue, and to kill him would be absolutely ridiculous and yeah. ludicrous. So, Joe Scarborough is. And it insane. also shows how the media changes the goalpost to make it about the person, you know, mm -hmm. diminishing the message. And it all goes back to these kind of self emulations and also the dude who shot himself at the Capitol, yeah. um, who was holding a sign saying tax the 1% or something. We still don't know who he was. We don't know what the sign said. But why do we glorify people like the Tunisian fruit vendor who self emulated and hold that person as kind of sparking this giant revolution? Then, in the Arab Spring, but when people do it here, yeah. they're called crazy, mentally ill, and I'm not saying that you you probably do have mental issues if you're going to do something that drastic, but mm. point being, every time something like that has happened here to make a grand statement, it's been completely crushed and marginalized. Yeah, this happened yeah. after the Iraq War, some guy who lost his son um, in, in the war, self-immolated and had this amazing, epic letter to the president, mm. and of course the news just discarded him as just a, another crazy person.